Since the Bahamas are so expensive for food, we decided to go back to Florida, West Palm Beach, in order to provision for crossing the Atlantic. We're heading out now. Um, it is six in the morning and we are going to try to make it as far as we can before it's dark. And just gotta say goodbye to the beautiful Staniel Key. So we're letting Frank do most of the work today because we want him to get nice and used to the way the boat handles and everything before the crossing. And this is the perfect shakedown as we head north. We had ourselves a quite a scare there. So I went down to just go inside just, and then I heard water kind of sloshing. And I thought, wow, well, that's odd. I, so I figured that the packing gland was, had come loose and was just spraying water in as the propeller was freewheeling. Nope, turns out the bilge was full of water and water had gotten up to the shaft and as the shaft was spinning, it was making that noise that I heard. So, <laughs> pumped it out, water kept coming back in, we couldn't find the hole. It was quite nerve wracking. So, what it ended up being was a problem I caused. So when we left this morning, I just checked the bilge, there was a tiny bit of water in there from rain, so, I pumped it out and when I did that I created a siphon and right now all the water tanks in the bow are completely empty so we're 800 pounds shy in the bow so the bow is up a lot and that means that the transom is down a lot so we're pretty much sitting squat in the water well the bilge pump dumps its water out quite close to the water line and right now that apparently is under the water line so when we were sailing and then I checked the bilge and pumped it out, all I did was create a siphon. So when I turned off the bilge pump, water just came right back in through the pump. And then when I pumped it out again, when I found the leak, you know, it kept happening over and over again. It took a while to figure out where this was coming from. Finally, we figured it out. So we disconnected the bilge pump, plugged up the hose, and as soon as we get to Florida, we're gonna get a check valve, that way this never happens again, because like, we just found this by coincidence. It was, otherwise it would have been a huge mess and we would have sunk in our motor for a second time. So, lesson learned. If you have a bilge pump through hull, low to the water line, maybe you have a check valve in there. Or relocate it really high up. One of the two. So, fun times here in the Bahamas. Just going along and a rainstorm is coming up. So, doesn't look like we're gonna need to reef down for this one. Made egg salad for lunch. Really good thing to do before you leave is on a um, overnighter is to hard boil eggs because they're a nice quick snack and you can do a lot with them. There's a storm heading our way so we're gonna reef down in preparation. It's been pretty slow last night and today. Maybe we'll get a little push from this storm.
Out there you can see a small piling. That is a lighthouse in the Bahamas. The winds today have been very, very light. This morning it was pretty much no wind at all. And now there's a whisper of wind. So we're gonna put our jib, which we call Josh, back up. And here they go. So we have a day of no wind. We've got Frank's gloating because his idea worked. And uh, <laughs> We've got Herbie looking ridiculous. <laughs> to keep the sun off. <laughs> to keep the sun off. <laughs> we have... Yeah, we've run out of water. We know! We've run out of eggs. <laughs> we've run out of bread. We're on our last reserves here. We're just trying to get to Florida. And um, once we get to Florida, we've got a lot to do in a lot, little amount of time. So we were heading to cross the Gulf Stream and say goodbye to the Bahamas. But then as we were passing Bimini, we got internet and I checked uh, a website I like, Windy, and there was a massive set of squalls coming right for us. And they're really powerful. And we saw them on the horizon, but we weren't sure where they were going, but it's quite obvious they were coming at us. So instead of going out into the Gulf Stream like idiots and dealing with 40 and 60 knot winds, we anchored and are going swimming. And after they pass over us, then we'll go. We anchored off of Bimini to take a little break for lunch and swimming, and now we are getting ready to cross the Gulf Stream once again. Now there are t lots of squalls all around us, so it might be a little bit of a bumpy ride, but we're on a bit of a tight schedule, so we're going to make it work. So we got our storm sails set. Uh, we're motoring because right now it's super calm, uh, and it'll be a fun ride. <laughs> it is so calm. We're like surrounded by storms, but none of them are hitting us, and as a result, we are not moving at all. And it's a little frustrating. This is fine.
We are now coming into the Lake Worth Inlet after a long four-day journey, which really shouldn't have been four days, but the weather was very squirrely, so we're just thankful to be back here and ready to get some pizza once we get on shore. This is a familiar sight that we didn't think we'd be seeing again for a long time. quite a long journey, you're going to do the important thing, pizza and beer. What do you like on pizza? Today we're going to do a video entirely based around provisioning for an Atlantic crossing. First stop, of course, is West Marine. May just get it now, but we're thinking about it. <laughs> we have checked everything off the list. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.